We just spend a lot of time waiting around. So many of the most powerful answers do come from taking action. And either you like something or you don't. Either way, it's helpful feedback. Either you go for it and it's the thing that you could keep pursuing for X amount of time until you change your damn mind. We're robbing ourselves of so much fulfillment and joy and purpose and all the things that so many of us are like craving in our life connection that we're waiting around for someone else to tell us that it's a good idea. So write your own permission slip and stop waiting around. (laughs) You're listening to Make Some Noise podcast, episode number 410 with guest Keisha Fitzgerald. Welcome to Make Some Noise Podcast, your guide for strategies, tools, and insight to empower yourself. I'm your host, Andrea Owen, global speaker, entrepreneur, life coach since 2007, and author of three books that have been translated into 18 languages and are available in 22 countries. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you maximize unshakable confidence, master resilience, and make some noise in your life. You ready? Let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am so glad that you are here. Happy October for all you fall-loving people or Halloween-loving people. I love this time of year. And I also am loving this time of year because starting on October 15th, we are opening up registration for the confidence course, the Make Some Noise Confidence course is coming. It is going to be an eight-week extravaganza, not to sound dramatic. (laughs) I'm excited about this because it's been so long since I've I have facilitated a group program uh, like this. And by myself, I co-hosted the the writing experience with my friend Amy Ehlers, but I don't very often teach programs all by my lonesome. I'm really excited about this because we're we're going through each and every chapter of Make Some Noise. And I love being able to dig in with all of you as we're doing right now in the free book club for Make Some Noise. For those of you that are a part of it, it's so fantastic to hear your unique situa- situations and how you're coming up on obstacles and challenges as you try to make more noise in your life. So I'm super pumped for this. If you go to andreaowen.com slash confidence, that's where the info page will be and you can sign up. If you're already on my my email subscription list, then you'll see the emails. But you know, sometimes they go to the that promotions folder in Gmail and you never see them. I happens to me all the time. I open up that inbox and I'm like, oh my God. There's so much in here. So if you want to be a part of it, y'all, it's $97. I'm keeping it super affordable. I want as many people to be able to come in as possible to have the community too. That's one of the biggest takeaways of these, of these programs is the community of women that gather to talk about their wins and celebrations and their unique challenges. It's so nice to know that you're not the only one, right? It's so nice to know that. So andreaowen.com slash confidence, or you can grab the link in the show notes for this particular episode. I also just want to say a big heartfelt thank you to all of you who've purchased Make Some Noise and who are reading it and tagging me on social media. And those of you who have left reviews on Amazon and Audible and Goodreads especially, those are probably the three main ones that people look at the most and they matter so much. It's so, so, so much to authors. It matters to people who are who are thinking about purchasing the book or, you know, listening to it on Audible. And it matters to publishers. At the end of the day, it matters. So I really, truly appreciate those of you that have taken the time to do that. And if you haven't, again, Amazon, especially if you bought it from Amazon, because it comes up as a verified purchase, it makes a difference, or Audible and uh, Goodreads, if you are a fan of Goodreads. And if you're not, I love Goodreads. It's it's an app, and I just love keeping track of all the books that I want to read. <laughs> That's the main reason I use it. And I like following some of the authors that I, I read and as well as read some reviews over there. But people are pretty serious on Goodreads. Like, they make it a career of writing these long, well-thought-out reviews. It's kind of amazing. Anyway, thank you again for that. And I'm pumped because – 
Keisha is on the show today. I've been on her podcast a couple of times. This young woman is so incredible. Uh, you'll you'll hear me talk about how I want to adopt her as my little sister in the show. And so for those of you that don't know her, let me tell you a little bit about Keisha. Keisha is a life enthusiast and the energetic host of the top-rated podcast, Empower Her, with over 2 million downloads in the first two years. She's also the founder and CEO of She Goes Company, which is designed to empower women with the tools and community so they will never have to go alone. She Goes has global membership community full of side hustlers and entrepreneurs all across the globe in an intimate podcasting course that helps 20 women a month launch their podcasts. So without further ado, here is Keisha. Keisha Fitzgerald is finally on the show. I'm so excited to be here, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pumped. I was flipping through Instagram and I saw one of your so super energetic posts and was like, why have I not had Keisha on the show? I told you when I was on your show a couple years ago that I wanted to adopt you as my little sister. And I was so honored and I am I will gladly take that any day. Thank you. <laughs> I love your energy and I know that everybody else will too. So, so let's jump in. And I was trolling your Instagram and I love these little blue post-it notes that you put up on your mirror and you take a picture of your your smiling face. And one that's that's recent as we were recording this that jumped out at me that I am obsessed with is you said worrying is literally betting against yourself. So can you say a little bit more about that? And and what made was there some moment that you had where you decided to write that down and post it? Yeah, I think so often, you know, we've got a precious amount of brain power, right? And energy to put towards anything. And what I catch myself doing doing is when I'm worrying about things, if I think about it, most often the things that I've worried about in the past, they didn't actually happen. And um, Mm. it's it's like I can spend that energy worrying and playing out hypothetical negative situations and starting to think about like, well, what could happen if this doesn't work out the way that I thought or this doesn't work out the way that I thought. But I can't control the outcomes of so much. And the only thing that I can control is the thoughts that I'm thinking, which then drives my behavior and my action and my perception of the world at large. So it just, it feels like I'm betting against my own ability to control my thoughts. And that's something that I know I can do no matter what's going on in the world around me. So for me, it, um, we're about to make a really big change in our life. My fiance is a dentist and he's actually going to be coming to join me in my business to help with a couple of projects that we're working on. Big change, obviously playing out a lot of like so he's going to wait, he's going to retire from dentistry. So he's going to basically go t- into like volunteering with dentistry. And then okay. he's going to like probably do more like outreach type of stuff. But he went to school for, you know, a lot of time to become a dentist, yeah. got into this field, liked it, but isn't sure if it's the right career path for him. I think he's realizing that a lot of people's anxiety that they project onto their dentist is just kind of wearing on him of being in that that type of a role. And he's like, gosh, I just love business. And I'd love Mm -hmm. to help you. We've got a couple of ideas of things that we want to work on together. He's got a lot of ideas of things he wants to do. And naturally with any change that's happening, there's certain emotions that come up of like, oh my gosh, you know, how are we going to like navigate this? All the things Mm -hmm. that have come in with that. In the past, I've supported both of us financially when he was going through dental school. So I had to almost just remind myself and just keep regrounding in this idea that it's like, I get to control how I think about this. And this is something that we're really excited about. And I'll let myself feel the full like human experience of, you know, the those thoughts that come in that are like, oh my gosh, am I capable of this? Like, is this a good idea? But at the root of it, it's like I believe in my ability to figure it out. And I extra believe in my ability to figure it out with this person. So mm-hmm. like, let's go. Right. So it's kind of like a reminder to myself, but also to other people too. Yeah. I, I, I love everything about that. And I was, I had a woman on my podcast. I coach people on, on the show every once in a while and her name is Melissa. I can drop that link in the show notes. And, and we were talking about confidence and taking action and and that whole topic. And that's one of the things that I was emphasizing to her is always bet on yourself. And I don't remember where I heard it, I think it was early on in my personal development journey. There was a woman mentor. Who knows? Maybe I saw it on Pinterest or like an inspirational quote. <laughs> <laughs> but I that struck me so much. And and hearing women talk about, you know, you're you're going to face 
so many obstacles and there are going to be people who bet against you. And, you know, I think especially, especially women in marginalized communities, like they walk into rooms and face even more obstacles than, than you and I would face. So all that being said, it's like, it can help so much if you bet on yourself and confidence is, is a bigger topic that, that we can talk more about. Cause there's something else that you like to talk about too, that I think is directly related to, to confidence. And you said, don't confuse inexperience with inability. Yeah. So can you say more about that? For sure. So I think a lot of times, like why I'm willing to bet on myself. And a lot of people can probably say this, that feel as if they're confident too, is because I, I make the act of building confidence and building belief in myself just part of like my day-to-day life. So every single day that I'm showing up to life, I'm like, okay, what do I mm-hmm. need to actually do today to move the needle forward? What are the tiny little things that are easy to do, but are also easy not to do? And how can I be the woman that actually does those things so that every single time that I'm showing up and doing the thing that I said I was going to do, I'm putting essentially a deposit into my confidence bucket, right? So yeah. then I'm going into anything, whether it's something that I've never done before, I know 100% that if I'm starting something for the first time that I'm not going to be very good at first. Like back when I started my podcast, right. I'm like, I know I'm going to suck at this, but I know that mm-hmm. after I keep putting in my reps, I'm going to get better and better. And I think it's really easy when we start something new to think like, oh my gosh, if I'm not good at this instantly, then it's not the right thing for me. And I, I'm always reminding myself of that and reminding women in my community of that too, that it's like, it's a simple concept to know that of course you're not going to be great at something when you first start. But for women, you know, that might be listening to this podcast that are successful in their career past or you've crushed it at something else, we know not to, you know, compare ourselves to other people, but it's often this challenging perspective to make sure that you're not comparing yourself to being new at something versus the version of you who crushes it at something else, whether that's switching your mm-hmm. career path or whatever. So I'm just reminding myself that constantly because I like to try things all the time, which means I have to get really okay with not being good at it at first. And it, again, it's easy to say, but it's harder to actually practice when you have crushed right. it at something else before. So that's another, I, these little post it notes, they're actually like lined up all against my mirror because I just have all these random reminders to myself that I feel like other oh, you women. Keep them. Oh, I keep them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a ton of post it notes of things like that. Um, just because I think it's really powerful reminders and I need them in different seasons of my life for sure. Yeah. I, well, we all do. And I, I want to ask you to circle back to when you were talking about, when I asked you the question and you were talking in the beginning about, you know, there's these series of things that you do every day when you're showing up in your life. Do you have a specific more? Cause I always tell people like, you don't have to have a morning routine mm-hmm. to have an amazing kick-ass life. You, you don't, you have to figure out what works for you. Yes. But I am curious about what people's routines look like and their rituals. <laughs> Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. It's hard to find a great mentor who can help me level up. My dream mentor, Shonda Rhimes. So I was really excited when I heard she has a class on Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best. Masterclass is the only streaming platform where you can learn and grow with over 200 plus of the world's best. For just $10 a month, an annual membership with Masterclass gets you unlimited access to every instructor. And you can access Masterclass on your phone, computer, smart TV, or even in audio mode. I'm always looking for ways to be a better writer, so I took Shonda Rhimes' screenwriting class. It helped me gain concrete technical advice, including structuring, 
filming, the writing process, and with shows under her belt like Grey's Anatomy and Bridgerton, it was so helpful. Plus, every new membership comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't wait another moment to start your learning journey with Masterclass. Right now, our listeners get an additional 15% off any annual membership at masterclass.com slash Andrea. That's 15% off at masterclass.com slash Andrea. Masterclass.com slash Andrea. Do you have something that you start your day with that helps with it? Yeah. I also think that the nighttime routine has even been more crucial for me because I have to focus on getting more sleep and then turning my brain off because I feel like my brain, and maybe someone could connect with this that's listening. I feel like I've got a lot of squirrels in my brain all the time that are just like ready to party. Um, so I need to calm them down so I can I don't sleep. think anybody would have guessed that listening to you. <laughs> um, so in the morning, like something that I'm always focusing on doing first thing is I'm trying to move my body within an hour because of this energy that I I want to I want to be the type of energy that I want to see in the world. I want to create this energy, but I also have to use it as a way to almost manage anxiousness that can come up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm the same. So I have to move like within the first hour. But what's also been really helpful for me is at night, my fiance, Sina and I, we have a dog and we go for a walk downtown. And we've done this for years and years. Every single night when we're kind of calming down, we don't bring our phones. We go for a walk at night and just kind of use that time to reconnect and then just decompress before actually going to bed. So it's movement in the morning. And then that unplugged, like not within an arm's length distance of my phone time that's blocked out proactively on my calendar to connect with the person that I want to connect most with. And I think for women that are constantly pouring out into other people, it's like, I have to be really, you know, really intentional about creating those spaces where I can disconnect from pouring into other people and just kind of be present where my feet are. And then also know what type of energy that I want to have for the day and And both of those come from that morning movement and that evening movement. So I'm not someone who journals for a really long time in the morning or has some like really like eight step process, but I do things like I look at the habits that I have that are already existing and I ask myself how I can stack something on top of that that can, Mm -hmm. you know, contribute to my overall happiness. So for example, brushing my teeth in the morning. Every single morning, I'm going to brush my teeth, obviously. So I'm brushing my teeth and I'm thinking proactively about what I'm most excited about for the day ahead. So it's almost like I'm priming my brain to get excited. I'm thinking about like anything that I could run into that you know might throw me a curveball and how I could proactively prepare for that. So I'm literally just taking that time every single day to think about what's happening throughout the day. So that's a tiny little thing that anyone can do. And I like it with brushing your teeth because it's a trigger that you're always going to have. In the evening, I do the same thing when I'm brushing my teeth where I'm thinking about what I'm proud of myself for for that day. And I try not to attach it just to accomplishments, but like how I showed up in a way that was very like true to me or how I said no to something that didn't feel like it was the right decision for me. Because just practicing feeling gratitude for myself and how I'm showing up in the world. That's been a really powerful way to help build confidence, but also to keep the type of energy that I want to have where I'm like sandwiching my days, feeling like I get to focus on myself. Okay. And I love that you said that, you know, I'm not someone that journals for pages and pages every day. Just you have to find what works for you. Yeah, for sure. And some people that's their, I'm such a verbal processor and I have like a few people that I can reach out to and just really like, word vomit all over them. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, there are times when I want to go pen to paper and that's really helpful for me, but it's not something that I do on a regular basis. And I think some people that is a lifeline for them and that's amazing. And it's just, like you said, you know, finding what works for you for sure. I've personally found that, and it's taken me a long time to figure this out, that when it comes to highly emotional states where I'm stuck, then that is when journaling helps. And I don't, when I do journal, it's not long. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know if I've just got it down to a science, but that's how I do that. And then if I need to process something that that's not an emotional problem, verbally is completely the way to go for me. I also want to ask you about permission, because this is something that you talk about and you tell women to write their own damn permission slip. So did something happen that, that made, made you start talking about that or, or tell us about that? Yeah. I think so often I just speak to so many women in my community that are just like waiting for someone to tell them 
that their idea is valid or that they should do that. Or if this person likes this idea, then I should actually go for it. And I just think there's so much waiting when in reality, like action gives you clarity. And for me, I have to start something and I can feel this like visceral reaction if it feels like it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. But if I don't start it and I just sit around waiting and thinking about it, I'm not going to get any like momentum way back. I'm not going to get the clarity that I'm actually looking for. And I think we just spend a lot of time waiting around and it really bugs me to be honest, because I just feel like so many of the most powerful answers do come from taking action and either you like something or you don't. Either way, it's helpful feedback. Either you go for it and it's the thing that you could keep pursuing for X amount of time until you change your damn mind. And I think if I, I just think we're robbing ourselves of so much fulfillment and joy and and purpose and all the things that so many of us are like craving in our life connection that we're waiting around for someone else to tell us that it's a good idea. But I think mm-hmm. truly like to my core that every single one of us is gifted a completely different vision and it's not going to look like anybody else's. So if you're waiting around for someone who doesn't even have the same vision as you to tell you that your idea is a good <laughs> idea, they're never going to because they weren't gifted the same vision, which also means I don't think they were gifted the same problems that you were gifted that you then had to navigate to make you the human that has qualified herself to handle the dream that's on your heart. So I think a lot of it just comes from like, if we can just take action, it's the simplest thing to do, but it's scary because we're not just worried about Mm -hmm. other people, like, you know, what they think of us. We're worried about if it fails and what they're going to think about us. And if we're not loved and they don't like us anymore. And we're just, we're playing this game, but it's like, just go, you have one shot. Yeah. So write your own permission slip and stop waiting around. <laughs> oh my god, you need to make you need to d- make like a t-shirt line with all of these things. I love them so much. <laughs> well, I I especially love this. So let's stay here for a minute because I have found the same thing in in my community of amazing women and myself too. I have gone through periods where seeking the counsel of other people became like a full-time job. And then I also think this is why people seek out psychics. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I need you to tell me that this is a good idea or that I'm going in the right direction or what's in my future. And I went, so a few years ago, I decided that I was going to stop doing that because one of my really good friends pointed it out and she was like, Andrea, you always ask us, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I, I think you already know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, I was so appreciative that she pointed that out. And, and it's interesting because I have a lot of confidence, but it, 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 as my life and business started to up level, that's when I started to seek out the counsel of my friends. And like, let's be honest, I have some really smart friends, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but do they know better sometimes, but why not bet on myself first and give myself permission and just see what's in there before I need, and then, and then see if I need to seek the counsel of other people. Yeah, for sure. It's, I think it's really valuable because, so it's interesting because there's this other side of it where some people are like, don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Like just do you right. blinders on. And I think in theory that makes sense, but as humans mm-hmm. we're wired to want to belong. So it actually doesn't right. make sense. Right. So it's kind of like having that curiosity of hearing other people's opinions because you're curious as to what they might be able to contribute to make your idea even better, but then staying in line with what, what you actually believe is true. And I think that's going to be continue to get harder and harder for me in my career because a lot of people that have done things that I haven't done yet, where it's like reminding myself that just because they've done things in that space that I still do know what's best for me because I'm the one that's living this life. I'm the one that's going to have to show up and put the reps in and actually put the work in. So it's like reminding yourself of why you like why you are uniquely qualified to live your own life is because of the strengths and the weaknesses that you have. So someone else can offer their opinion, but it's like, it's listening to your own intuition. And I think that's easier to say than to actually do, but it comes from that practice, right? Of like, when you, when you trust yourself enough that you can hear other people's feedback, but still do what feels aligned. And yeah, I, I feel like it just takes time too. It does. It does. And it takes practice and it takes failing and and all of those things. I wrote about that and how to stop feeling like shit. 
the zero fucks mentality of yeah. don't care what anybody else thinks. And you do have to get to a point where yes, but realize that who do you want to actually give fucks in your yeah. life? Like it's, yeah. it should be a very short list of people, mm-hmm. you know, for you, it's probably your fiance, maybe um, close colleagues, like, you know, your parents, like, and sometimes, and sometimes it's not people's parents. Like they're not on the list. Yeah. It's making sure you really know who that close group of people is, whose opinions you care about and that they, their opinions matter Mm -hmm. and the rest of the world doesn't. And that's again, easier said than done for sure. I think especially for women who are conditioned to very much care what other people think. Yeah. (laughs) It's a, it's a day in and day out learning experience. Yeah. And it's actually what I've noticed that's been helpful for me too, is I don't get too high or too low on other people's opinions regardless. And I've actually been very conscious. Like when a lot of people are even like as my podcast started to take off and I had a lot of people that I'm kind of still in the the early stages of it where, you know, a lot of people were giving me a lot of praise for it. I'm like, I can't let people like that are giving me praise even get to my head. And that means I also can't let people that don't vibe with me that don't even know me, right. I can't let their opinion, let me go too low. So it's almost like finding like, what do I think? And then to your point of what the few closest people that really, really know me, um, what do they think? But still it's what I think most and not getting too high or too low and kind of finding that like middle ground to stay Mm -hmm. in my own lane per se has been, super, super helpful for me. And then just kind of reminding myself that not every person, even those people that, you know, I do value their opinions, they can't also be the go-tos for every single aspect of my life, right? Like someone I'm not going to ask advice to that one of my single closest girlfriends, I'm probably not going to ask her marriage advice, right? Just like I'm not going to ask someone who's not financially, you know, in a better place than me, I'm not probably not going to take their financial advice. So it's kind of like knowing who to ask while still having those people that are close. And then still, even with those close, close people, not getting too high or too low based off of what they say. And that's that's been something that I've honestly been consciously working on too. I like that. That's interesting talking about, you know, not too high or not too low about other people's opinions. I also feel like when you're talking about compliments and praise, mm-hmm. that is a tight balance as well, because we can, you know, I, I, I want all women to accept praise, mm-hmm. to get comfortable hearing praise because many of them will poo poo compliments who they yeah. will not remember fantastic thing that their employer said on their annual review, but they'll remember the thing that's like the, you know, room for improvement. So true. (laughs) So true. That type of thing. But, and you you know, it it can be a downfall when you're constantly seeking out validation and, you know, for lack of a better word, get high from it. Yeah. And then you can move away. One of the things that where I've really learned to check my ego is leaning on and very much understanding what my values are, not just in my personal life, but in as a as a career person, like as a person who has a platform and influence. I got very clear a few years ago on on what my values are and revisit them at least annually to make sure that that they're still applicable in this season of my life. Mm-hmm. And a couple of years ago, I narrowed it down and I'm like, it's responsibility because I have such a huge responsibility as someone who's a leader, as well as trust. And that's trusting myself, trusting other people on my team, and also transparency. And that's something I, you know, I built a brand and a business on that. So mm-hmm. as long as I am being true to those values, which is not always easy. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Then I'm okay. No matter what anybody says. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's so, so good. You know, I would just thought of this quote that I saw on Instagram and I ended up like recording a podcast episode about it because I thought it was so interesting. The quote was from someone that was like a meme or something on Twitter. And it said, we should say to our kids, you must be so proud of yourself rather than just saying, I'm so proud of you. So Mm -hmm. they grow up intrinsically motivated rather than just motivated to please other people. And I don't have any kids, but I think about that where I even just say that 
to myself where I'm like, I should be proud of myself, right? Rather than just waiting (laughs) for someone else to feel proud of me. And it's like, as women, if we can remind ourselves to be that example, that's so freaking powerful because of exactly what you said, where people forget about how well they did and like what they, you know, received on their reviews, but also just thinking like you did the work to get that recognition from the person who said that they were proud of you or that you did X, Y, Z. And it's like reminding ourselves to be like, freaking yeah, like I'm doing the work to get myself here. Like I'm proud of myself and I should be excited about that random tangent, but it just came into my head. I have definitely been in that place where my paycheck ran out before the next one got here. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. You can use Earnin to pay for a girl's night out, a last minute gift for a loved one, or even summer camp for the kids. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R. N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in noise under podcast when you sign up. It really, really helps the show. Noise under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Fast forward to the end of 2024 and think about your goals. What can you do right now to give yourself the best chance of succeeding? If you want to learn a new language, you absolutely should get Babbel. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Now it's so easy to speak simple conversation phrases with the guy that takes care of my lawn without having to consult language apps. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash noise. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash noise, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash noise. Rules and restrictions may apply. I love your random tangent. You know what it also reminds me of, and it points to is parenting yourself. Yeah. So there's this, there's this clip of Mel Robbins up on stage that was floating around Twitter. And I got mad because they weren't giving her credit. <laughs> it was like in the comments. I'm like, that's Mel Robbins. <laughs> it's her. But she was, she was, ta- she was speaking at an event. And she was talking specifically about, it must've been like a college crowd or a younger crowd. Cause she was talking about, you know, the thing that no one tells you when you turn 18 and you're officially an adult is now it's time to learn how to parent yourself. And so very yeah. few young people are, are told that or taught that, like, what does that even look like? And I think what you just mentioned points to that is saying things to yourself that either your parents did say to you that you loved, or if they didn't, that you wished that you would have heard that you needed at that time and that you still need now. So real. So what was it again? It was, um, I, I hope you're so proud of yourself. Yeah. You like be proud saying of to our kids, yeah. like you must be proud of yourself rather than just, must be proud of yourself. I'm so proud of you. I just, yeah. I love like, cause the intrinsic motivation is just that's so powerful, like as adults, but it's also to your point, of course, it all stems from childhood things too, where I'm like, my, I think of my own upbringing and I'm like, my mom was an addict and something she did such a great job at is she still really enabled me to be very motivated. And she did a good job of doing the best that she could with the tools that she had to like, you know, say, Hey, like, 
you're, you can do anything that you want. And I was very confident that I could be self-sufficient and I could handle things even despite what was going on. And I'm like, that was such a powerful gift to give to a young child, to make them believe that they can figure anything out. I mean, it's carried Mm -hmm. into my adult life so much. So it's like, that was a really, real big parenting win (laughs) from my parents growing up, I think. Oh, thanks for sharing that. And and I I have a I have a framed picture of myself when it's actually my senior picture and it was my it was in my dad's house for forever and he passed away in 2016 and when um my stepmom gave me, you know, a bunch of stuff from from their place when she packed up and moved out and that was one of the things in there. And and it was actually the same picture that was in our house when I was a senior in high school and he just kept the same frame and everything. It's a very 90s frame. And I have it in my office. And the reason that I have it in my office is not because I love the 90s gold silk shirt that I'm wearing, which I do. (laughs) Coming back again. (laughs) But I know it's so weird to be that lady. Trust me when it happens to you, (laughs) Keisha. To be that lady that goes in the store and is like, well, I wore this when I was in high school. (laughs) A lot of hard stuff happened that year. A lot of hard stuff. And Every time I go through something big where I have a breakthrough, you know, I just spent a year in like intense trauma therapy for old, old stuff. And I turn and I look at that picture and I either like salute her or I like put an imaginary like drink in the air because it's for her. It's, you know, it's for my younger self that was in so much pain that was carrying so much and didn't have zero tools or coping mechanisms to deal with. Yeah, what was going on, and I that that is my way of parenting myself mm-hmm. is uh, looking to my younger self and honoring her with so much compassion and so much love. Well, and it's so cool because obviously of everything that you've gone through and how many tools you had to develop, and it just made like and now what you've built from it and how many women have been impacted. Like I remember listening to your podcast years ago. You know, like when I was first kind of coming into this space. And it's just like, it's crazy to think how that girl was kind of, and, and, and younger, of course, but was a catalyst for all of this change that you've made in your personal life and how the ripple, more like tidal wave that has come from all of those tools that you've built. Like that is so cool. So I'd salute her too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I feel like, I do feel like there's divine things going on. Like I, sure. when I write books and things like that, and I get these like great ideas, I, I, I I don't say this to diminish my talent and I say it to push people to also hone their own intuition and look to the guides and angels that are around them yeah. because I do believe that these tools, ideas, the creativity, the books, everything comes through me from something otherworldly. I don't know if it's God or the universe or what it is, Yeah, (laughs) but it's too weird how it lands in my mind and in my body. So I know that there's something else out there. And I I think that we all have it. Mm -hmm. We have to It's a couple of things. We have to um, trust ourselves enough that it's there. Just even believe for a moment that it is possible and also be quiet and still enough to hear it, which is very difficult yeah. for someone like us. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down for a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. But once you start, because it's just kind of like the universal concept of like, whatever you look for, you're going to find, right? Where once you start finding these little connections that you're like, this makes sense that this happened for me. This happened and it got me into this situation. Whoa, something else was involved with this. And then you start to see it everywhere where it's mm-hmm. like, wow, it's like pulling a thread on a sweater. Yes. Oh my gosh. Exactly. I, I love that so much. I catch myself doing that often where when things are, so it's the concept of like, you know, just like life being rigged in your favor or whatever, believing that it's working for you, that whole concept, which we could credit to 800 million people, but <laughs> like I'm talking about this, but truly it's like when things are going really well for me, I constantly like look back at the things that I perceived at the time weren't going well, that had they not gone the way that they went, I wouldn't have the skills or the appreciation or even like, you know, just the pride of becoming the person that I am now because of the things that I thought weren't going well. And then when things right. aren't going well, I'm reminding myself that like, it's going to suck while I'm in it. And I'm going to have that full, you know, human experience of like feeling like, you know, crying, the ugly cry with your snot and mascara, like getting your mouth while you're sitting on the mm-hmm, bathroom mm-hmm. floor, like all that, <laughs> that hot mess express stuff. Like I'm going to have that. 
And I'm still going to have this like subtle, even if it doesn't feel like it in that exact moment, that reminder of like, you've gone through hard things before. And on the other end, you were actually still grateful for part of this because of what it taught you, because of what the opportunities that it gifted you, because of the person that you became in pursuit of whatever you're working on. So it's like that dance of like, really that appreciation, but also this inner knowing of like, there's something else at play here. Like that's been such a driving force for me too. So I, I totally hear you on that. hundred percent. Okay. I want to ask you one more thing and it's about showing up for the why, because I think that we get so stuck on the how. So if somebody wants to start a side hustle or they want to change careers or they want to even just start a new hobby or start dating again, we get stuck on the step-by-step process and like, how am I going to even do this? Which like, let's be honest, sometimes you need to do some research yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to figure out what the first step is, but you like talking about the why. So say more about that. Yeah. I just think a lot of times for some things, yes, you do need to have basic research, but I think a lot of times we use the how as a way to talk ourselves out of doing the thing that we know we want to do because we start to look for all the reasons that we don't know how. And what happens Mm -hmm. is sometimes we start going down this path. We uncover, oh, I don't know how to let's use start a podcast. I don't know how to do it. Then you start Googling it. And then there's all these hows and all these different directions that you can go. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. Look how far that I have to go. And we do that thing where we look at where we are now and we look at where we want to go and that space in between and all the crap that we don't know how to do. And then we just say, screw it. I'm not even going to do this because (laughs) we are like, it's more comfortable to stay in what we already know. We already know what it's like to be here. So when I think about the why it's thinking a lot about like extension benefit of like who else is going to benefit as a byproduct of it, how good could it get? And also thinking about like what problems, like I'm always just picking what problems that I want more when I'm thinking about why I'm doing something. No matter Mm -hmm. what you do, you're going to have problems. So it's either the problem of staying where you're at right now, trying to smoosh down that uncomfortable feeling that's telling you to make a change or the problem of having to manage through the anxiousness and the fear that's going to come from taking a leap to do something that you're not actually sure how to do it or how it could pan out. And you know, every single positive thing has those negative things to it too. And every single level is going to have different problems. We all know this, but it's like when you know why you want to do it and you can actually get to something juicy that makes you feel emotional and you think about like how good it could get, which some people are really motivated by that, or how bad it could be if you don't do it and you get to the end with all of these shoulda, woulda, couldas, you know, and wish that you would have had a different life that you didn't even have. I'm like, you got to just get yourself to start. So when you can pull at something emotional, I can always get myself to start. When I get in the how and the step one, step two, do, 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 I, mm-hmm. that's not fun. It doesn't make me like feel emotionally called to want to show up. But when I dig into the why and I can really like attach myself to feeling like I'm uniquely gifted to do this and I will figure out any how along the way, then I'm, it, it just pulls me to want to show up versus going into that logical side of my brain that has to be so systematic that doesn't that doesn't yank at my heartstrings and a lot of things we're not going to know how to do and then once you start figuring out what you don't know you realize there's so much more that you don't know and it's like oh <laughs> the kicker. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I'll write a book. Like, oh, how do I write a book? Ah, okay. I'm going to do this later. (laughs) Right. I mean, I'm doing that in real time. So it's like, just, it's like, if you know why you're doing it, you can figure anything out you can. Mm -hmm. And I mean, especially for people, I'm not a parent, but it's like, I'm sure parents listening to this, you don't know how the baby's going to come out of you, but it's (laughs) going to come out of you and you want it to badly enough that you're going to make it happen. Right. So yeah. It applies to anything, you know? I love the part where you were talking about what problems do you want? Because you're going to yeah. have problems no matter what. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true though, right? Like, and I think I'm so, I'm such an optimistic per- person by nature and a very like happy-go-lucky energy, but I'm also a realist in that there's, I don't want a life where I don't have problems because then I'm not challenging myself. And I don't feel like I'm contributing or like I'm not growing. Like, think about how much it sucks when you don't feel like you're growing and you're just Mm -hmm. like floating around. Like, I'm bored out of my mind. I want to take a fork and shove it deep into my eyeball. Like, it's just so boring. So instead, it's like, oh my gosh, I want to grow. So, what problem do I want? I want the problem that seems like it's going to be more fun to solve than the problem of feeling stuck. 
I, that reminds me of when I was uh, like around 2015, I really started working on like my quote unquote money blocks and like, what was the reason I had plateaued for so many years? Like it didn't make any sense. And I uncovered some stuff, some stories I had. And, and one of them was, I was afraid that with more money, I wouldn't know how to manage it with taxes and like, what is an LLC versus an S corp? Yeah. And there were so many moving parts and I don't have a business degree. Like yeah. <laughs> no one ever taught me about money and I'm like, I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to ruin it. That was, that was the belief that I had. And so I didn't think this consciously, but unconsciously I did think that it's like, okay, well, which, so I'll figure out taxes and Google is amazing. And so is YouTube <laughs> with explaining things, <laughs> right? <laughs> Tax people exist for this you know, exact thing. And it was, it was so much easier to just kind of, I don't think I got it all out on paper, but I was very clear about, okay, if this, then that, if I have this problem, then what's the possible solution that I could come up with? Like I'm a smart, resourceful human being and I'll figure it out. Yeah. So sometimes it's just getting clarity on that is like, okay, yeah, there's a very real possibility that you could mess up on your taxes is it likely I'm going to go to jail? No. <laughs> is it likely I might have to pay a penalty? Yes. And actually that's happened. I had to pay a lot in penalties and state taxes last year because I screwed it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know I've what? That. It's fine. Was I mad? Yeah, but it's fine. Yeah. You didn't die. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just angrily wrote out the check to <laughs> North Carolina Department of Revenue. <laughs> it, it's so true though, Andrea, when you figure out what those blocks are, it's like, it's, oh gosh, it's everything. Like I, I had told myself a story for a long time that I couldn't have a really successful business and be as goofy and weird as I am. And mm -hmm. I, and once I figured out those things are not correlated, I'm like, I didn't, I don't know where I got this idea that like to have a, you know, a financially successful business and, you know, contribute the way that I wanted to, that I had to all of a sudden be like buttoned up and super serious. Like I like had yeah. to wear nylons at home or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> nylons. Do you still sell those? I, I never, I haven't worn Like this. in the egg? I used to work at Ruby's <laughs> Diner where I had to wear nylons. I love Ruby's. <laughs> so good. So good. But anyway, you know, I was thinking that I had to be super serious. And once I was like, where, where is that even coming from? Like, what, what example do I have of that? That's not even true. And I'm like questioning my own belief about this. I'm like, wait a second pop the lid off this. We need to just freaking go because that's just a bunch of bullshit. A hundred percent. Okay. We could talk all day long. I am so appreciative that you came on the show. So tell everybody where to go to get more of you. So you have your own podcast. I do. Um, thank you so much for having me. I just adore you. So um, yeah, my podcast is called Empower Her. It's Monday and Thursday uh, episodes. So come check me out. And then my favorite social media platform is Instagram. It's at Keisha, K-A-C-I-A dot Fitzgerald. I love your Instagram and your podcast is fire. You are a mood. <laughs> <laughs> so are you. Well, My that's why I love you millennials. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. You know how grateful I am for your time and that you choose to spend it with me and my guests. And remember, it's our life's journey to make ourselves better humans and our life's responsibility to make the world a better place. Bye for now. Hi there. Swinging back by to say one more thing. You know how I'm always giving advice over here on the show and on social media, and a couple of those things is that I'm always telling you to ask for what you want, be clear about it, and also ask for help. So I am taking a dose of my own medicine, and I'm going to do that right now. It would be the absolute best and mean the world to me if you reviewed and subscribed to this show, Make Some Noise Podcast, on whatever podcast platform of your choice. And even more importantly, it would matter so much if you shared this show. Sharing the show is one of the few ways the podcast can grow, and that also gives more women an opportunity to make some noise in their lives. You can do that by taking a screenshot when you're listening on your phone and sharing it in your Instagram or Facebook stories. If you're on Instagram, you can tag me at Hey Andrea Owen, and I try my best to always reshare those and give you a quick thank you DM. And also, you can tell your friends and family about it. Tell them what you learned. Tell them a really awesome guest that you found on the show that you started following. Whatever it is, I appreciate so much you sharing about this show.
I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts.